So talking a little bit more about some of the science that is happening on board. Uh, for longer journeys to the moon and Mars, we've talked a little bit about this. You know, this the International Space Station is such an amazing test bed for us to conduct scientific research, um, you know, experiments themselves, but also on human bodies. So as we think about that, those missions, the scientists are looking at how this extended time in space affects the human body, because of course we know missions to Mars are going to be longer than these six month mission durations to the International Space Station. So astronauts on these missions of various length can participate in an integrated set of studies that monitor their health before, during, and after the missions. These are 14 experience, they, experiments, they are collectively called the Complement of Integrated Protocols for Human Exploration Research. To shorten that, we just call it Cypher. <laughs> uh, these collect multiple physiological and psychological measures of of the human response to time and space. So these results could play a pivotal role in ensuring the safety, the health, the success of astronauts on deep space exploration missions, which of course is our next big goal. Right, like we've sent uh, humans, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away, but on interplanetary uh, missions, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be going potentially millions of miles away, right? And we would like to know, you know, maybe how these long duration missions affect the body so that um, we can understand how the body will react, you know, in a longer period of time, maybe longer than six months. It could be months, it could be years. And, you know, we do have NASA astronaut Frank Rubio on board who will, when he comes home, hold the record for the longest amount of time in space. I believe it's 371 days. So over a year in space uh, for an American astronaut, that'll be the new record. Uh, he is still on board. We expect to see him come home next month. So I know he must be looking forward to <laughs> his return to Earth. Now our next milestone is uh, the, well, we expect waypoint zero arrival. Again, that'll be at about 5.17 a.m. Pacific time. So about 15 minutes from now. And again, if you're just tuning in, this is Dragon making its way to the International Space Station, this view coming from the space station itself. And again, we are taking your questions on X with the hashtag AskNASA. Let's see if we have some questions here. How long was the prep for this mission overall? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, a lot of these crew members have been assigned to this mission uh, for probably over a year-ish, but they've been astronauts for longer or a cosmonaut for longer. You know, we know Satoshi Furukawa was selected as an astronaut in 1999. So upon selection, you really start your prep for your missions, even though you don't necessarily know what mission you'll be on at that time. But you start things immediately, like um, training, how to use the systems on the International Space Station, how to perform maintenance, how to do spacewalks. So your training really starts the day you become an astronaut candidate. Uh, however, training for this mission gets a little more intense when they are assigned and when they uh, can come here to Hawthorne and start training with the teams here, as well as um, training specific for specific, you know, experience, experiments they might conduct on the International Space Station. Right, it's not just training for the liftoff and launch to the International Space Station, but it's all the training that includes, you know, flying, uh, potentially flying Dragon if needed, um, performing the science experiments on the International Space Station. A.M. Pacific, so about 12 minutes from now. Again, they will not pause there. Uh, they will go to pass through to waypoint one. That's about 220 meters away from the International Space Station. Uh, this view again from inside Dragon, crew monitoring as Dragon flies autonomously to the International Space Station, continuing to get closer and closer. That approach initiation burn brought us up about 400 meters directly below the station. Uh, we are now about 686 meters from the station or about 0.4 miles. So getting closer and closer again, looking for docking at 9.05 a.m. Eastern, uh, 6.05 a.m. Pacific. So almost exactly an hour from now. And we did see views of the International Space Station before, which looked like a tiny little dot. And now we are getting so close that you can really see uh, the International Space Station there. And that's on your left-hand screen. And looking from the International Space Station to Dragon on your right-hand screen, getting a really cool view of Dragon. 
And you see that glow. That is <laughs> the spacecraft are both going into an orbital daytime. So we've talked about how the uh, at orbital velocity, you're orbiting the Earth 17,500 miles per hour. You see a sunrise or a sunset every 45 minutes. So they're going into that sunrise period. Um, that's why you, you saw that glow, that blooming on the camera. Um, they will be there again for about 45 minutes. It does look like we may dock just as we get into an orbital nighttime. But again, this view on your right-hand side of the screen, the Dragon capsule itself, and then its destination on the left, the International Space Station. Both have eyes on each other, and we are in the big loop, as we talked about earlier, meaning they can all communicate on the same uh, communication network. We did get a go for approaching waypoint zero as well as waypoint one. We're just about 10 minutes away from the expected time of arrival at waypoint zero. And again, this is just a checkpoint. They do not need to stop. Um, they will, they can continue to pass through waypoint zero um, and move to waypoint one, which will swing it up and out in front of the space station. And it will pause a, at a distance of approximately 220 meters away from the station. Now, right now, as we speak, the International Space Station has just started flying over the state of Washington. It's about to fly directly over Seattle. So if you're in the area, uh, it is about to cross over into um, Canada as well. So if you're in that area near that border, uh, go outside, maybe look up. You can always check out spotthestation.nasa.gov to see when it'll fly over you. But it is going to pass over the continental U.S. Um, right now. It's it's flying right over the state of Washington. So I'm sure they, if they looked down right now, would have beautiful views <laughs> of the mountain ranges there. Um, it'll be south of Calgary here pretty shortly. And as you mentioned earlier, you don't need a telescope to, to see the International Space Station. You can actually see it with yeah. the naked eye. It's the, about the size of a football field um, and big enough for you to, to walk outside and be able to see it pass by. And I know they can't see me, but I always wave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> So again, things still progressing pretty smoothly this morning. Next milestone being that they will pass through, will not stop at waypoint zero, uh, less than eight minutes from now. And a reminder, we are going to the zenith or the space facing port of the International Space Station today. They will be uh, next door neighbors with Dragon Endeavor, which is at the forward facing port on node two. And right now on the International Space Station, we have seven crew members. So we are going to have 11 people living and working on the orbiting laboratory for the next several days. Uh, you know, we'll start looking at an undocking timeline and a splashdown date for crew six pretty soon. Um, but we want to make sure they get that handover time. So right now, again, seven people living on the space station. Um, right now, it looks like three of them are having, no, four of them are having their midday meal. So on the space station, they use Greenwich meantime. Um, it's just a little bit afternoon there, about 12, 10 p.m. A few of them are eating. Again, this is a weekend day, so technically sometimes if there's not operations going on, um, they do get time off on the weekends. They're able to relax, talk to family members. Um, right now, several of them are eating, and then Woody Hoberg will step into the uh, Dragon Approach monitoring. He will also work on pressurizing the vestibule once we are docked. And on your screen is a pretty cool view from the International Space Station looking at Dragon. You can see the nose cone deployed um, and you can also see some of the thrusters um, they're using the Draco thrusters to maneuver Dragon towards the International Space Station. You can see Earth in the background. Yeah, right now they are flying over Saskatchewan, so south of Sask Saskatoon. <laughs> That's the view uh, below Dragon there. And then Dragon's view of the International Space Station. So if you're in that area, go take a look up. You might spot our crew members.
again, less than an hour away from docking now. Bringing, it will bring that crew up to seven people. And we are about five minutes from reaching waypoint zero. Expected time is 5.17 a.m. Pacific time. So during that crew handover period, when we talked about, you know, these 11 crew members on the International Space Station, we have crew six. That consists of Stephen Bowen, Woody Hoberg, Sultan al Nayadi, and Andrei Fedyaev. Um, they have been living up there for about six months now. And before we bring them home, we want them to be able to talk to Crew 7. Um, you know, we have some first-time flyers, especially on this spacecraft. So we want them to be able to show them the ropes of what's going on aboard the International Space Station. Um, you know, they can hand over any science experiments that they've been working on, show them um, any of the safety protocols. That's actually one of the very first things that they will do uh, right after they dock. They will move into an ISS safety briefing. You know, they get a lot of training on the ground about how to handle any contingencies or off nominal situations, but once you get on space, in space, it's it's just different. You need to do it again. You need the refresher. So it's, um, you know, safety is the utmost importance. So that's the first thing that they'll do after they dock and, and do their welcoming ceremony for us. Um, but that crew handover period just it gives a nice buffer for um, these team members to be able to share what's been happening on the International Space Station over the last six months with this crew who has just arrived. This view from another camera on the International Space Station. Again, the station right now is about 262 statute miles over Earth, actually flying over Ontario at this point. Uh, it's moving pretty fast. You know, just a couple minutes ago, it was flying over Washington State. We're now all the way over Ontario, so 17,500 miles an hour. That is about five miles per second. Uh, quite speedy. And speed is relative, so it doesn't look that fast on your screen, but that is very, <laughs> very fast. <laughs> We are just a few minutes now from passing through waypoint zero, and we expect to pass through waypoint one as well. That'll be um, about 20, 25 minutes following our uh, our pass through waypoint zero. Again, these are these are points built into the. Uh, docking process. That way, if we needed to hold at these, we definitely can. It's a great opportunity to check out any systems, but the teams here um, in Hawthorne, as well as in Houston, have pulled go. They're not tracking any issues that would preclude us from um, a safe docking. Again, looking at that coming up at about 6.05 a.m. Pacific. And our Cronus flight controller in Houston is the one who is navigating these cameras on the International Space Station. So they always do a great job of getting us some really amazing views um, as Dragon gets closer. Again, just as a reminder, waypoint zero will mean that Dragon is 400 meters directly below station, and as it maneuvers to waypoint one, it, that is basically swinging the vehicle to out in front of the station. It will be approximately 220 meters away from station. And that is coming up here in just about two minutes from now. We're reaching waypoint zero is coming up in about two minutes. Waypoint one puts us on the docking axis, so it pretty much lines us directly up with that corridor um, that the spacecraft will follow all the way in to where it docks on the zenith port of the International Space Station. There is a pause at waypoint two. Uh, that's about 20 meters away, so that is kind of the final check of all the systems on both sides of the spacecrafts to make sure that everyone's still go for docking. We're not tracking any major issues. They can hold there for any lighting changes if they wanted to, um, but not always necessary. So sometimes it's a brief pause and sometimes they just hold to make sure that everything is checking out as planned. And you did just see a view inside of the cabin of Dragon and you saw our astronauts, our commander and pilot, um, they're basically just monitoring uh, Dragon is an autonomous vehicle, so really all the crew needs to do is just monitor um, as they approach the station. There's really no manual driving or flying at this point. 
This gives you a great view with the nose cone open. That's where the docking mechanism is located. Um, that's the hatch through which these astronauts will fly through Dragon and into the International Space Station. Of course, yesterday during launch, we saw them enter through the uh, side hatch. They won't use that again until they splash down and are on back on Earth and, and um, egress on the recovery ship. So, oh, we just got confirmation. We have arrived at waypoint zero. We are converging trajectory on waypoint one. So again, things continuing to move smoothly. We'll start to get a different view of the International Space Station as we're gonna be going to the Zenith port. So we're gonna be going directly above it. We'll be looking down on the space station. So that view we have right now of the space station looking down on Dragon, uh, it'll be flip-flopped. So Dragon will be looking down on the space station and see Earth below that. So again, we've just reached waypoint zero, which means Dragon is 400 meters directly below station. And we can see it in views now coming from the International Space Station, but coming up, Dragon will move from waypoint zero to waypoint one. That'll swing it up and out in front of the space station, actually directly above it, pausing at a distance of approximately 220 meters. Again, that puts us on the docking axis. That essentially means it's directly in front of the docking port. And again, we've heard teams do the go no go polls everything remains go for us this morning so again coming up uh next we will see dragon spacex on the big loop approach zero has started and the trajectory has converged on waypoint one expect arrival at waypoint one around one two five niner utc SpaceX Dragon copies on the big loop arrival at waypoint one at one two five nine. And just the core communicating with the crew, confirming that they are on their way to waypoint one. Now this maneuver from waypoint zero to waypoint one um, is coming up in just about 30 minutes from now. So we do have some, some time uh, as this maneuver happens. Uh, this is a slow and steady process again. Um, we are traveling at 17,500 miles per hour, um, but the process is uh, slow and steady uh, as we pass through each one of these checkpoints to make sure that we can monitor everything that's happening um, and make sure that the vehicle's safe, the crew is safe, as well as the International Space Station is also uh, safe before we begin docking with the space station. We were just talking about what's underneath the nose cone um, so obviously the docking port, but we also